Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to talk about the design process and space planning as it relates to interior design. So what is space planning? Well space planning is really essentially a series of steps that sequentially pulls together fragments of information into a final space plan. So, you know, as designers, we gather all kinds of information about the project from the client, and eventually we sort out the pieces, put the puzzle together, and create a final plan. So, with this whole process, um, really where you start is you receive a list of required spaces for the project. Um, this may or may not happen right away. You might not get all of the information on your first meeting, um, but you know you, you gather these parts and pieces. Then you start to develop you know, some idea of how the client uses the space. Again, you might not find out everything the client knows and, and does, but you, you, know, you slowly gather this information. And then through observation and additional client interviews, you start to get a sense of what functions need to be near each other. At this point, you would begin to develop a program that lays out the project requirements, the client needs, etc. You'll then develop a logical grouping of the required spaces and you begin to untangle the puzzle. So the first part of untangling the puzzle is the adjacency matrix. So with the adjacency matrix, we create a list of all of the needed spaces based on, again, the client interviews and so on. So these are a couple different examples. Um, you know, the one on the left is a smaller project, maybe a simple house, and the one on the right is a much larger commercial type of space. So just kind of breaking one of these down, if we take an adjacency matrix, um, and this is kind of the most common look that they can have, although they can have different appearances. So, um, you know, this is just kind of a starting point. Um, we, you know, we see that um, using the key here on the left, this particular designer has broken them down to desirable spaces, the black dot, semi-desirable, the white dot, and then the dash for an undesirable adjacency. So black dot means we'd like these, these areas to be close together if possible. White eh, would be nice, but it's not super critical. And then the dash is we'd like to uh, maybe avoid having those spaces next to each other. Um, and this will vary from project to project, from client to client. And you know this isn't necessarily a right or wrong type of thing but what we need for a particular project. So then looking at the adjacency matrix as we put this together, um, it's sort of like a multiplication table. Um, you know, thinking about, okay, so for example, we have a bedroom here. And then if I come down and trace back to storage, I can see that storage near the bedroom would be considered ideal. Um, looking at the kitchen, maybe tracing down I see a white circle here tracing back laundry room near the kitchen. Maybe that's desirable, might be nice, but not required. Then here, for example, kitchen and bedroom. It might be you know, undesirable for this client to have a kitchen and bedroom near each other. So that's how we can um, start determining how our spaces work out is creating this matrix and actually gridding out what the client does and doesn't want. At some point during this preliminary process for space planning, you're going to acquire a footprint of the space. So at this time, you really want to develop at least three organizational ideas based on the footprint, based on the adjacency matrix that we just looked at. After feedback from the client, you know, you'll select one or maybe a couple and still kind of work it out and begin to develop more concretely, you know, adding walls, openings, furniture. So that's how that process goes. So the first step after client interviews, working on the program, determining adjacencies with the adjacency matrix, we start with the bubble diagrams. Bubble diagrams can also have a lot of different looks. So this is where 
drawing, graphic design, um, personal style all comes in. Uh, but what we do is literally draw bubbles, draw circles, and figure out what spaces want to be where using that matrix. And while we do that, we can um, represent the scale and relative proportions of spaces. So in this example here on the left, the performance space um, is very large, right? Then secondary to that, the gallery store as you enter is smaller, the collaboration studio and so on. So uh, we size our bubbles proportionately. And then we're really creating that relationship of, okay, so I'm setting up um, the entrance here, very large arrow, so I understand that's the main entrance, I'm coming in. And then um, the style here is such that these overlapping circles and blending colors are indicating to me that these spaces are open and connected with each other in some fashion. And then offshooting from those um, in the gallery store, for example, is, ah, oh, we have a cash wrap, we have display merchandise, um, so on and so forth, right? Um, so you'll see each of these has a different style, um, and but they all are very effective. So um, with this one here, for example, I can see um, that we have some very strong main corridors and interactions here with these very bold lines. And that um, I can see that, you know, for example, the reception area, let's say, um, is right off the entrance, bold line. And that we have within this space a couple of seats, mail, and in between reception and work, we have the fax copy area. So it's all about how these spaces connect. The main traffic patterns are in the largest, boldest lines or arrows. Secondary traffic patterns are in thinner, smaller arrows or lines, uh, and so on, right? So it's all a, you know, a very graphical representation of how people interact with the space. Once you've worked out the general relationships and adjacencies with the bubble diagram, you can refine that bubble diagram um, and actually lay it within the footprint. In fact, some people even like to start here. Instead of having that sort of loose bubble look, you can actually work within the footprint of the building and create your bubbles and your circulation paths all within that space. And that's a perfectly reasonable way to go and some people find that um, to be more helpful. Okay, but it's the same basic idea of, you know, just loosely defining spaces proportional to each other, uh, but again this time within the actual footprint of the building. This example here, we see the corridor is represented in this um, kind of yellowy lime green line, right? So we have to think about that circulation. We're not only thinking about the rooms and the relationship to each other, but how we get to them, what the main traffic paths are, what the minor um, traffic paths are. Um, so here we can see a representation of a pretty literal corridor going around these spaces. But then here, for example, as we go through reception, we can see that that would be a literal corridor with walls, but um, implied, you know, traffic paths between furniture, for example. Over here, a very different look. It's all just black and white, um, you know, playing around with graphics and shape, shading, stippling, um, and then showing those traffic patterns here as well. So the main entrance is in the biggest, boldest arrow. Then the main pattern through the building is in this squiggly but very large arrow. And then the smaller paths with the dotted lines, for example. So it's all about you know line weight and shape and style to convey how the space flows. Then we have block diagrams next. So, you know, first we did the adjacency matrix. Then we worked on bubbles, perhaps refined bubbles, and you can do both. Then we get into a block diagram as our next step. So a block is just tightening things up and essentially squaring from a bubble to more, you know, standard rectilinear rooms. Although we certainly know that in design, not all the rooms have to be square, right? Um, so we see on the right here, you know, taking that general floor plan that we saw earlier, and now we really give the rooms 
shape. We have this idea of wall thickness and how these rooms might interact with each other. Uh, we actually have the corridors represented with physical separation between the rooms. And we're again showing those circulation paths so we understand the flow of the space. Same idea here on the left, just a, a different graphical style, you know, also incorporating color and, um, you know, some of, you know, other graphic elements, again, a personal choice. So, you know, really what we saw there is that transition from bubble to block. So very conceptual, conceptual very loose to slightly more defined, giving shape to the room and getting a little bit more real, a little bit more literal, but still a very conceptual plan. Then uh, once you have the, the block diagram worked out and you think you're really getting a good sense of how these spaces are gonna flow, you can start with the loose floor plans. So loose floor plans are just getting a little bit more precise, right? We keep getting more and more precise. So here we really start thinking about how these rooms actually function and in, this includes in, incorporating door openings, right? So how do we get in and out of these spaces? This you know adds a, a complex um, piece of information that we need to know. So you know up um, here, you know, looking at these spaces um, with the same floor plan, you know, they're just rectangle after rectangle, pretty straightforward, right? Then looking here, we see, ah, you know, this designer has chosen to notch in those entrances so that the doors don't open straight from the corridor into the room, but there's actually a 90 degree turn, for example, offering more privacy and all of that. So we get more detailed, we really think about how the space is really going to function. Oops. Again, how um, the traffic patterns will work. And then we also start adding some loose furniture, uh, you know, just trying to figure out proportions, how things are going to fit. Then from the loose floor plan, we go to the developed or final floor plan. And so the final floor plan, we then have all wall thicknesses interior and exterior, doors, windows, all of the, you know, fixtures, plumbing fixtures. Um, in this case, you know, being a commercial building, we have stall doors in the bathroom and sinks and all that kind of thing, as well as all of the furniture laid out, how it would be. Okay, so really that's the process. And the image here on the right is a classic hand-drawn black and white floor plan with a little bit of shading. Um, and then here on the left, we see, you know, just an example um, of a color rendered floor plan representing the materials, um, light coming in the windows, um, post shade, walls, all of that. So these can have many, many, many different looks. You know, again, this is all about personal style and graphics, um, but the general process um, is the same. So then at the end again, we're going from a loose sketched out floor plan, still figuring out the traffic patterns, um, you know, all of those little intricacies, and then the final polished floor plan um, with everything laid out. So, you know, with this whole process of space planning, you are in this continual um, cycle of refining and sketching and redrawing to develop um, the chosen theme, to develop um, the plan that your client needs. And so, you know, as you go through this process, don't be afraid to use tracing paper and overlay and make notes and just sketch and draw and work out your various ideas because, you know, with our interior design, with our space, there's, there's not just one way to do things. Um, so this whole process is about determining what's best for your client and how to best use the space. At the very end, when you get everything all worked out, you're going to present your final design solution to your client. And of course, you hope they love it. But, you know, if they don't, it's back to the drawing board and working out um, new solutions for possibly the new um, issues that came up during that meeting. 
So again, the space planning process is really translating the program information from the client into a floor plan that meets their needs. And this isn't always, you know, necessarily a linear process. There can be a lot of back and forth um, that needs to happen, um, you know, to really get to the best solution for your client.